The reality of being human is that the actions and thoughts of our own kind are often a mystery to us. I subscribe to the belief that every action can be understood if you just put yourself in that person's shoes, understand the conditions they are operating under and try to follow their thread of logic. Unfortunately this does not always yield results and a lot of the time I'm left wondering, why on God's green earth would you do that? Of course, there can always be hidden motives and agendas that you are unaware of that direct a person's seemingly illogical actions, but for the majority of cases, I think the reality is a lot simpler. People can just be dumb. They often aren't involved in any grand conspiracy that you don't understand, they just got swept up with whatever random thought entered their head at that very moment. And that's why living in a world with billions of these knuckleheads can be worrying. You have no idea what asinine thing someone is willing to throw their lives away for, much less throw your life away for. In today's story, that asinine thing is a number. Would you risk your life for a number? Would you kill someone for it? Well, the people in this story did, but maybe their actions aren't quite as senseless as they seem, and maybe this is a case where a greater unseen conspiracy is at the heart of the violence. But before we get into that, I just want to take a quick minute to ensure you aren't getting entangled in any conspiracies yourself. Don't allow your information to travel the world unprotected. Get NordVPN today and turn yourself into an internet power user. NordVPN provides an encryption service for your internet data, meaning it protects all the information your computer sends and receives via the internet. You don't want random people analyzing that stuff. That information contains things like your location. NordVPN lets you disguise that data, so now your computer's location can be whatever you choose. Another benefit of this is that it allows you to access region-locked content, like movies that only stream in certain countries. With NordVPN, you can trick these websites into letting you watch your favorite movies. Get it today and they'll give you long-term protection and service for a great discount. Don't believe them? It's risk-free. If you're not happy, they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So get NordVPN today. Visit nordvpn.com forward slash cukeser to get a two-year plan plus four additional months with that all-important discount. Thanks for supporting the channel, now let's get back into today's story. In the early 90s, Pepsi was looking for ways to topple Coca-Cola off the soda throne, over which it had long reigned. One of the ways Pepsi tried this actually turned out to be one of the company's most successful strategies in history giveaways. Collect the little coupons on the packaging and win random prizes. We're all well familiar with this kind of stuff now. It's basically just bribing people to buy your product. Some might say doing giveaways is a cheap way to overcome whatever shortcomings your product obviously has that prevent it gaining market share on its own merits, but that's what marketing is all about, baby. As part of this bold new enterprising way of thinking, they launched Pepsi Number Fever. A three digit number was printed on the underside of every bottle cap and these essentially worked like lottery tickets. If you had a winning number on your bottle cap, Pepsi would award you a cash prize. These cash prizes varied from a few dollars to life changing sums of money. They rolled out the competition to various countries in Latin America, but it wasn't until 1992 when they brought it to the Philippines that Pepsi number fever really took hold. You could win anywhere between 100 pesos, about $4, to 1 million pesos, roughly $40,000. And with that, Pepsi ran an aggressive ad campaign, promoting the fact that if you drank Pepsi, you could end up a millionaire. They even put actual winners in their ads, some who'd had lives of poverty. Pepsi wanted everyone to know that every time you opened a bottle, your life could be changed forever. And not just because you developed long-lasting health problems from drinking their dreadful, dreadful product. And so, Pepsi Number Fever was a huge success. Monthly sales in the Philippines went from $10 million to $14 million. Market share increased from 19.4% to 24.9%. The winning numbers were circulated on radio stations and in newspapers. Pepsi was laughing and the people were lapping it up. Unfortunately, there were some unpleasant symptoms associated with Pepsi Number Fever, including hysteria. A maid was jailed after being accused of stealing her employer's winning bottle cap, and the Pepsi number fever proved to be a potentially deadly ailment when two Pepsi salespeople were murdered following a dispute over a bottle cap. Two people being murdered over a bottle cap would usually be the climax to a ridiculous story told on this channel, but somehow this story gets a lot crazier. 
Following the success of the campaign, Pepsi decided to extend it and print more winning numbers. One of the new winning numbers they chose was 349. This was to be for the top prize of 1 million pesos. They would print the number on a very small selection of bottle caps so that it would be an extremely rare occurrence. The problem was, the number 349 was already in circulation. It had been a losing number, meaning it was a fairly common one to have. Somehow, Pepsi did not realise their mistake until they announced that 349 was a winning number. If you had 349, you were now a millionaire. Of course, many people had 349, and so they rushed out and gathered at Pepsi's bottling factories. Quickly, Pepsi realised they'd fucked up. Badly. There was no way they'd be able to pay all these people 1 million pesos. They announced they had made a mistake and explained that only the newly printed 349s were winners, and the security codes also printed on the bottle caps could be used to verify which 349s were winners and which were losers. This received immediate backlash from the people who pointed out that the promotional materials led them to believe the three digit number was what determined the winners and the security code was only used to validate the bottle cap's authenticity. And the people had a point. If you were told you could win a million pesos or dollary dues or whatever with a three digit code and then after you seemingly won the company turned around and started talking shite about security codes and all this crap you'd be rightfully pissed and you'd want them to honour their own fucking campaign. Protests gathered at the factories and soon policemen and soldiers were fighting back crowds hurling rocks at the buildings. Delivery trucks could only come and go with the company of armed guards. Bomb scares were called in and Pepsi officials were flooded with death threats. To appease the angered masses, Pepsi offered to award any 349 with 500 pesos as a sort of goodwill gesture, an acknowledgement of their mistake. But 500 pesos is a fairly shoddy consolation prize when you've been led to believe you're getting a million. The protests continued and soon groups were formed to campaign against Pepsi. Supposedly some groups were actually funded by Coke and given money by the company to help the groups take on their rivals. These groups continued to rally their members against Pepsi for months, gathering lawsuits from around 10,000 people demanding money from Pepsi, with the idea that they would take these claims to the American courts. Some of these groups required memberships fees, or an agreement to share 30% of any future settlements. Some people were reportedly selling their belongings to afford the journey to attend rallies and protests in major Philippine cities. Some people were not quite so hopeful as that and they just exchanged their 349 for the 500 pesos. Reportedly this alone cost Pepsi nearly 10 million dollars. Some people sold their 349s to others who were expecting Pepsi to be forced to pay out following the building legal action. During this time, Pepsi's sales plummeted as their public relations were at an all-time low. It's actually pretty impressive to fuck up your PR so badly your brand name stirs up violent anger. But it wasn't just the money. Many saw the 349 incident as another example of a multinational company exploiting a developing country. And there was some anti-American sentiment in the Philippines following years of colonial rule. Molotovs were lobbed at factories and delivery trucks. Executives had to start travelling with bodyguards. There was even a basketball team called the Pepsi Cola Hotshots that changed their name to the 7 Up Uncolas. But my favourite report is of a 64 year old protester who was quoted as saying, Even if I die here, my ghost will come to fight Pepsi. I admire the dedication there, and the imagery of that is truly sublime, but I think given the choice between eternal slumber and shaking my ghostly fist at a factory, I choose the former. This is kind of what I was getting at in the intro. As badly as Pepsi fucked people over here, it probably isn't worth throwing your life away for. And yet... Nearly a year after the initial 349 incident, a homemade bomb was thrown at a Pepsi truck that had arrived at a market in Manila. The bomb bounced off the Pepsi truck and killed a school teacher and a five-year-old girl. Five others were injured. A month later, someone threw a grenade into a Pepsi plant, killing three employees. Killing people over this seems crazy, but there are claims that there's more to this story than it seems. There is indeed a grand conspiracy. Some claim that Pepsi officials offered certain individuals within the protest groups large amounts of money to disrupt the protests with violence. This was so that Pepsi could downplay the legitimate grievances of the protesters and frame them as unreasonable lunatics. 
If that's true, it means Pepsi was simultaneously bribing people to drink their soda and bomb their delivery trucks. Interesting business strategy. The protest groups did eventually get the lawsuits to America, but a New York court dismissed them and said the suits should be heard in the Philippines instead. It was only in 2006, over a decade after the incident, that a Philippine court ruled Pepsi hadn't been negligent and wasn't liable for damages. Another happy ending in the corporate book of fairy tales. I've heard this one is especially popular for getting young executives to sleep. Would you believe this isn't even the only story I've done on Pepsi? They traded a load of soda with the Soviet Union for a bunch of warships, technically making Pepsi the owner of one of the world's largest naval fleets. You should go check out that video, or any of my other videos, they're all equally as bad. If you need more and faster, you should subscribe, though I can't promise any life-changing giveaway I'm too miserly for that. Doctor, heard about the number fever? Huh? Number fever? What fever? What's the number fever problem? You can use up to one million pesos. One million pesos? How? Just look under these specially marked crowns at 7-Up, Mirinda, Mountain Dew, and Pepsi. And if the number is the same as any of the daily winning numbers, you will...